Hello, hello. Yeah. Thanks, Akesh. I'll correct you. I'm the co-chair. The scientific chair is sitting there, Dr. Pratik Chaudhary. Right. Okay. So, well, I, it looks like it's a conversation between people who know it and who are interested. So, the job I'm doing very quickly is interpretation of AGP. My disclaimer is my slides are, these are about eight years old because the interpretation hasn't changed. And I'm sticking to a basic understanding of AGP and, and the rest of my colleagues are going to present actually cases on uh, the professional CGM and on real-time CGM, which will have the current data. But I'm just showing you the, the original uh, derivation of AGP. Of course, the reason we do this is, uh, as we understand today, that A1Cs may be similar, but the variability may be different, and it's important to see the larger picture, and hence the need to move beyond just SMBG and HB1C. However, when we talk about CGMs, and many of you may not be aware of this, um, when we started using CGMs earlier, life wasn't uh, that easy. We would very often get this kind of a data, and I remember using the Metronic uh, Gold series of the CGM, a little more bulkier device. And the data that, I mean, you would ask the patient to do this, pay the money, get the data for four days initially and six days. But then we very often didn't have much to tell them out of it. You are varying too much. How do I change it? What, what do I guide you on? And then it was a sorry figure. So you would get data very often like this, each color representing a different day. And very difficult to then make uh, therapeutic changes or lifestyle changes. So which is where comes in uh, AGP, ambulatory glucose profile, which is constructed from a model day plot, which collapses the glucose data over several days or weeks to show the data over a 24 hour period. When I say several days to weeks, the current software available requires at least five days of data for uh, its ability to give us an AGP curve. And what we use it now very often is for the 14 day period as well. However, this can be used for longer time. So if your data is for longer time, it will give you AGP for longer time. And Pratik will show that when, you, when patients use real-time CGM on their monitor, this thing, you can see it up to 90 days. Uh, at least 90 days is what I know. I don't know longer than that if it's there. So till 90 days. So the longer the time the data is there, it will give you the AGP for that kind of time. But which is where, before heading to the advances in this, it's also Im important that we understand the basics of, of this AGP interpretation. It's a visual snapshot of patient's typical day, which will reveal some amount of hypoglycemia. If it is there, that's going below the 70 mark. Hyperglycemia, 180 is the cutoff. So we know the range for most people with diabetes, except in pregnancy, is 70 to 180. That's the recommended target that we keep. And will also tell us, give us an idea about the variability. And I'll come to that. So when you talk about variability, when you see in the AGP, you see the whole breadth of the AGP, the larger the breadth, larger the variability. And this refers to the interday variability, which means how much your sugars are varying from a day-to-day -day basis. There, of course, is also intraday variability, which means within the day, how much are we moving up and down. So there are two types of variability, interday and intraday variability. The median is where 50% of your data points is. And for somebody watching the AGP for the first time, the most important line to see is, is the median line where you get 50% data points. And then you quickly learn to interpret, uh, look at the variability and the breadth and, and other aspects of time and range and so on. So it's an innovative way of looking at patients with diabetes because of the ample amount of data and then simplifying the data. It's basically a software derivation of compressing the data points to give us a more meaningful graph which we can understand and work on with the patient. For that matter, patients with type 1 predominantly who use it also learn to understand and interpret this. Though largely, at least in India, most of them are only looking at numbers and not doing much uh, for the data. There are four types of reports that provide different angles of information and can be useful for patient counseling. So this is a, a modal day plot. As I said, this is your typical AGP graph. This talks about the overall glycemic profile for the 14 day period. And it allows the detection of trends as well as hidden glycemic issues. 
So here we'll be able to see whether the patient has had some hypo on, on particular days. It's also telling us about the sudden spike post breakfast or even just post tea and biscuits. And that's extremely interesting in what we see in Indian patients and probably Anjali will show some case based on that. That the huge spike that you're getting after that and in this case you're seeing the variability because your graph, so what, what kind of graph do we want? We want this nice thin snake. And I've often said this before, what we don't want to see is a python who's just had a meal. And, and these are all pythons which have had a meal and the food is passing from one end gradually to the other and you don't want to see that. When you talk about the pattern insights, this is called the traffic signal, that's the second report, which is going to talk to us about the probability of low glucose and your marks are green is uh, uh, low, ye yellow is moderate and, and the pink is high telling us at what time of the day. So e this graph is divided into your uh, 6 hour quartiles, 12 to 6, 6 to 12. And you, by looking at this, you're also trying to see that what is the probability of low sugar, what is the probability of, of variability. And it's again one of those uh, reports that you get, which people don't spend much time on, but it's actually interesting to see that. But I often say that start looking at the AGP, start looking at the median, and then start looking at other aspects. Like when you learn to read an ECG, you will first understand the leads, what is representing which part of the heart. Then most of us will still be caught up in looking at only T wave changes. And then you see some of those people who really look at ECG and can tell you from an ECG that what kind of blockage you may have or what other issues maybe have is, is the better understanding. And then you have the daily report. So this is important because you also want to see what's happening on, the, on each day. We spoke about the first, which is a complete um, summary of the profile but this is each day with the time and range for each day coming up and this is important for us to see what's happening on a particular day because very often when you use uh, CGM and, and, and get the AGP data especially professional CGM which still tends to be used more you also ask the patient to write down everything in the logbook about what they are eating when they went for a walk and so on so if you see that they are spiking on three days out of 14 days you want to go and see what they ate on that particular day and which is where your individual day readings are extremely important. There's another reason why uh, your individual day readings are important because very often when you look at the AGP and this is something that many people don't realize, you may think that this patient is not having any hypoglycemia because your AGP graph did not show you anything going below 70. Let's understand the AGP is a percentile. The 10% up and the 10% down after the 90th and the 10 percentiles is actually not represented in the AGP at all. And which is where when you first look at the AGP, you think no hypoglycemia, you get into the individual day reading and you'll suddenly see one or two red spots. But they were lesser duration and amount and hence not reflecting in the AGP but reflecting in the individual day reading. Now time in range, um, I think we understand that today that it's amount of time that the individual is spending within a pre-specified range. I repeat that largely the range in people with type 1 and type 2 which is recommended is 70 to 180. The rationale of time in range has been established through various studies showing a correlation between the more time you spent in range, the lesser chances of complications which has been derived data based on the earlier studies. Now, this is time in range in, in context with the AGP report. So when I said you're seeing the TIR and, and the daily profiles, you'll get the time in range, which is time in range, time below range, and time above range. And you're going to be looking at all the three things, how much time has been spent within range, above and below. For individual day and at the end of the report, you'll see the total time in range for that 14-day period, if it's a 14-day profile or a 10-day period, then a 10-day profile. The key benefits of this graph is the AGP goes beyond A1C, um, it identifies the patterns, it identifies variability and so on. Various insights that you get for the glycemic profile of the patient, you also start seeing the impact of various food on glycemic levels. So that's important and, and very often we as believers are questioned by the CGM atheists that why do you want to do CGM in patients with pre-diabetes, with, with early diabetes. Um, and the question is that, though we have multiple advantages of CGM, I think one of the best places for is, is for people who are pre-diabetic or early diabetes to actually see what is going to impact their sugars in a more favorable way. 
and 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 that itself can be a game changer changer for many of them so the glucose data is organized into and i'm coming back to explaining the agp so this is this is organized into five smooth curves um, you know you're looking at the top second third fourth and fifth now to understand this better uh, better as i said the 10% of the data above the 98th percentile and the 10% below the 10th percentile is kind of removed from this because these are less often and i often like to say that this is this is um, like those miss world and miss universe programs i haven't seen them in but but as a teen i was very fascinated by uh, those pageant beauty pageant shows and what if you all remember what would happen is they would be scoring by the jury and the judges and to make it fair because sometimes it could be biased they will remove the lowest score and the highest score and then do the average i don't know how many of you paid that much attention and were busy with the looking at the beauty i was looking at the i was looking at other figures from that time so <laughs> you got it right so, so that's that's the rationale of of removing these two to you know because they are uh, too infrequent so let's remove that and then this is the middle of the data the median which has 50% of the points you have the interquartile range which is the light shaded blue portion between the 25th and 75th percentile which is 50% of the data points and then you will of course have the interdocile the in, interdecile range which is the uh, area between the uh, between the entire this blue shaded lighter portions what does normal look like this is what a normal profile looks like right, which is a flatter line again that's an agp derived from those individual data points and this is what we may accept as as good control in diabetes um this is what we will like to see so a lot of it and there's not too much of variability not not uh, interday nor intraday and it's staying within the range so the question is is this good control too and and of course when all of you are seeing that you're seeing the spikes you're seeing uh, uh, sugars going out of the range we'll know that this may not be the best profile yeah so it is telling us exactly what we are seeing in this uh, this this the variability and and the excursions so we always talk about the exposure the variability and stability and i'll explain that in the next slide so this probably is most important slide that i have a message on about agp derived treatment priorities what do you really how do you treat the patient on the basis of this what should you be doing now if you see an agp profile like this you know that this patient has a lot of exposure which means there is a lot of hyperglycemia that you see but at the same time you are able to also see some hypoglycemic dip here you are seeing a lot of interday variability because the breadth of the agp graph is not what i said should be a thin snake but this is really broad and it's talking that this patient is very variable in, on day to day basis but also within the day you look at the median and how it's moving from about 250 in the night coming down to about 180 then going back up to 350 or so there's a lot of intraday variability as well so when you're talking about treating the patient what should you try and do should you just try and reduce the exposure for this patient that would be probably catastrophic because if you try and just bring the sugars down the sugars will go down here as well and cause hypoglycemia so your first aspect is to reduce the variability and when you talk about reducing the variability it largely refers to reducing the your your uh, interday variability which means you are trying to try and reduce the day to day changes and narrow the uh, agp graph so you want to reduce the variability then you want to improve the stability now stability is the word referred to the intraday so let's not get confused interday means what was changing from day to day you want to reduce the breadth of the agp which is reducing variability the next is you want to try and make your agp graph more flatter even if it remains high that's fine but let it just first make it flatter which is improving stability and only once you have done that so first you reduce the variability now you have tried to made it flatter only then try and reduce the exposure that means increase the dose of your insulin or whatever to try and get the sugars down so that this graph comes down like this if you had tried to reduce sugars which is what very often ps clinicians land up doing without changing the 
variability and improving the stability, you'll end up with more hypoglycemia. Right? And there are case discussions where I have seen that, that you've tried to do that. The time in range has improved, but the time below range has also worsened. So this is uh, this is more theoretical that you look at the median curve arises after breakfast. You'll look seeing here what's happening to the readings between 4 and 8 a.m. and the stability. And when you talk about stability, uh, what exactly is stability? The absolute minute by minute change in the median, the average change is about 12 milligram per hour. If the sugar is moving up or down more than 12 milligrams per hour, it makes it more uh, variable. So that's that's what starts changing the median too much. If it's moving more than 12 milligram per hour, and that's the cutoff. And in terms of variability, we we spoke about both the interquartile range and the interdecile range. We can always measure that. I think, um, in the interest of time. I, I'm going to conclude. So this, this also allows us to pick up how much time the person is spending in hypoglycemia, if at all. Here, of course, we don't see hypoglycemia or time below range for this patient. This is, this is not going below the hypoglycemic range. So let me end by saying that this is something where we start with of just understanding the AGP. Very, very important uses and, and practical aspects, which I will now ask the chairpersons to call upon the next speakers and enlighten us. Thank you so much.